Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite tropes ever, which is the faded mate trope. I have two other recommendation videos with faded mates in them. I'll link them down below if you have not seen those yet. But yeah, this is my third video for faded mates. And I also wanted to say if I sound a little weird, I very badly bit my tongue like an hour ago and um, my tongue is swelling and still bleeding. So like if I sound weird, <laughs> That's what that is, so I just wanted to make you aware of that. Hi everyone, it's Editing Avery here, and I just need to make another little preface. Um, throughout the video, I didn't even notice this until I was editing it, but um, you can see blood in my mouth, which is gross, okay? It's gross. I know it's gross. I didn't even notice it was bleeding, so like, if blood really, 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 really freaks you out, go on ahead. Blood is not dripping out of me. You can just, like, when I open my mouth, you can tell that there's blood in there. So, like, if that really freaks you out, maybe turn away now. But, like, it's not a lot of blood. But I just wanted to make that aware and put a little trigger warning out there for those individuals who cannot look at blood at all. Okay. <laughs> Back to the video. Anyway, um, let's get into these recommendations. If you don't know what Faded Mates means, um, it's basically when... Two people are destined to be with one another. They have like a mating bond or it's a mated pair. Whatever the case may be, these characters are soulmates and faded mates. I love them. This trope is very evident in fantasy romances, but they do pop up in um, like some of my sci-fi ones as well. So let's get into these recommendations. The first one that I have to mention is actually the last book in the Horde Kings of Drakkar series. Um, these are two books in that series. I only know I only own the first two, <laughs> but the last one, book six, Throne of the Horde King, is the only one in the series that actually has like a faded mate mating bond like element to it. Like, these books are good, but like they don't have like the faded mate bond that like all the other books in this video are gonna have, you know? Our hero in here is a uh, Drakari male. He's an alien species um, that lives on the planet Drakar. And he is actually, a kind of like bastard prince to the king of all of the Drakari. Um, no one really knows that he is though. Anyway, he goes to this temple of priestesses to ask for their help for this overarching plot line that's been happening throughout the entire series, like this big bad thing coming. Um, and he needs these priestesses help. Um, the heroine in this book is actually half Drakari, half human, which is very unheard of. And she has been living in this temple for her whole entire life. And he just so happens to like come across her one day when he's sneaking into the temple. He like sneaks into her room and she's like, who are you? <laughs> but then she sees this man as an opportunity to like get out of the tower. She's been wanting to escape her whole life, like to seek adventure. They've actually been dreaming of the other person throughout the ent their entire life. Like this is how the mating bond like started. Like they know that they are fated and destined to be with one another because they've been in each other's dreams ever since they can remember. So <laughs> um, that's what I want to leave you with. It is the last book in a overarching series. So please be aware of that. I do recommend reading them in order because of that overarching like bad guy, bad thing plot line happening. Um, Cause you don't really learn about it until like book three in this series. And this is book six. So um, I really did enjoy this one. And if you want a good alien romance with a fate of make trope, like Look no further. Another alien romance is Claiming His Mate by A.G. Wild. This is the first book in a kind of novella length under 200 page like novella alien romance series. Um, and each book in the series is about a human woman who has a disability and her fated mate romance with um, one of the heroes in this story who happened to be aliens. So Marion and the women that are on this space cruise, they've been tricked by their human government to think that they've won this all expenses paid a uh, space cruise. Um, but then when she gets on the space cruise, she realizes like, huh, I realized everyone else here also has physical disabilities. She was born with um, a limb difference. So like she doesn't have her arm from the elbow down. And like, she's like, Everyone else here also has a physical disability. Like, what is going on? They don't know yet, but um, they were basically sacrificed to um, these aliens called the Atari. Um, in order for Earth and the Atari to form an alliance, Earth decided to give them human women to possibly be their mates. The Atari don't know that these women are not here, like, 
willingly. Anyway, the space cruise ends up getting commandeered by these evil space pirates and like a whole on massacre happens where um, there's only four human women survivors and they get taken by these evil aliens and the Atari come to find their prospective wives, hopefully, and check security cam camera footage and realize like, They've been taken by some not great people. We're gonna have like search parties out to go find these women. So our hero in here, Aknar, he is very persistent about finding one woman in particular and that was Marion that he saw on the video feed. He's like, that woman is calling to me. And when they finally meet each other for the first time, when he saves her from, from slavery, like he realizes this is my mate. Like that mating bond comes in like the moment he sees her. Be aware this book does get violent at times. Um, trigger warnings for death, blood, gore, massacres, ableism, and kidnapping. <laughs> like there, A.G. Wild has her dark moments in her books, but then she also has these light fluffy moments. So you just got to be prepared for that, you know? Arjo's Resonance by Ruby Dixon has the Theta Mate trope. This is her first book in the Ice Planet Clone series, which is a spinoff to the Ice Planet Barbarians and Ice Home series. You've read about Arjo in the series Ice Home. Um, and he has been waiting to find his fate mate for quite a long time. And he gets like bonked on the head, I think, and like kidnapped by some other aliens that are living underground on Mount Hoth that like our, our fellow aliens don't know about. And he gets put in this cell with a human woman. And like right when he sees her, his cooey starts humming and he realizes that this, this fragile little woman is his, is his mate. And he like, falls to his knees and thanks whoever's out there like thank you I finally have found my other half like he is eternally grateful because he thought it would never happen he thought he would never find his fate of mate so that's all I want to say about this one I do have a dedicated like reading vlog of me um reading only this book I'll link it down below if you want to know like my review while I read the book but I love me a good like Ice Planet Barbarian not Hoth setting fate of mate romance like the Fate of Mate aspect in these books. Okay, the Fate of Mate aspect in Taken to Varaxia, oh, left me absolutely gobsmacked. This book, there is a lot, <laughs> a lot going into this one. This one reads very fantasy, but it is sci-fi. You know, like it reads like a fantasy romance book, but it's sci-fi romance at the same time. Like it, it feels like it's both, honestly. Miari lives on this moon filled with humans and this is like years 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 in the future pretend like earth is like blown up like humans now don't live on earth anymore anyway so humans live on this moon surrounding this planet called Braxia I believe it's surrounding Braxia anyway it's on this moon <laughs> and once every three years um the moon gets invaded by aliens who are basically their owners and uh take women between a certain age range unwillingly to mate with them. Miari and her friends are absolutely terrified for when they will be chosen and when they will be old enough to be chosen. And Miari is actually a um, hybrid. So she was the product of one of the human women on the moon getting sexually assaulted by one of the aliens that comes. And so she does not look like a human. She has human aspects because she is a hybrid so like she's part human part this other alien species so her skin is red and she has a tail um but like the humans like love her you know so like she is a part of this community anyway the king leader of the planet varaxia realizes that some payments or some products sorry no, products is a better word products are being sent to this moon and he's like um what is going on like why are things being sent to this moon like nothing should be on there. So he takes a trip to the moon and realizes what is going on and all these slaves are here basically and they're all getting taken against their will. And he is like mortified. He's like so pissed. His like lieutenant started this up like without him knowing. And while he's in a rage of like being like, what the heck is going on? He consents his mate is on this moon and he goes absolutely feral because he's like my mate has been around all of this been living on this horrible place like i am pissed off so he like consents her so he like hunts her down figure out figures out that it is miari and that's what i'm going to say about that i already talked about the book for a while but like this book oh, the fate of mate aspect in here left me like swooning on the floor like melting in a puddle so <laughs> there are a bunch of trigger warnings in here this book does get dark at times so triggering for sa but not of the main characters 
attempted essay on the main characters, death, gore, blood, slavery, starvation, discussions of women being objects. So please be aware of all those things if there are triggers for you. But man, <laughs> this sci-fi romance, huh? left me like breathless at points. For a fantasy one, I have The Fay King's Prize by Jamie Schlosser. This is technically book three in her Between Dawn and Dusk series, but like, I think you could read it as a standalone if you wanted to. I read them in order, but like, you do you. You do whatever you want. <laughs> Our heroine in here ends up getting kidnapped with a, a bunch of other human women. Um, there's a portal to Earth, like our day in Earth. There's some portals that go to Earth from this fantasy realm. You've like read it about it in this series. And she gets taken and brought to this fantasy realm, not knowing what's going on. She's basically blindfolded this entire time, doesn't know where she is or anything, but she's being auctioned off to be sold to Faye. Xander is the king of the day realm. And he is like at this auction to infiltrate it, to figure out who's like in charge of it so he can bring them down um, because like, these auctions are not going around like legally like he does not want them to be happening obviously and so he's like in the crowd with like a cloak over his head looking kind of ominous um he's trying to figure out who's putting on this auction he also has a curse put on him um like the kings of this realm were cursed at a very young age to be blind until they find their fated mate and so the hero doesn't even see the heroine he could just hear her and knows that that's who he's been waiting for his entire life. Like his body knows that that's his fated mate. Um, and so he ends up saving her from this auction and telling her like they're fated mates and actually getting married to her without her knowing. Like he's like, here, say these words. She says the words and he's like, okay, great, we're married now. And she's like, what? <laughs> like, huh? Like, I need to go back home. Like, what are you doing? She's obviously not very happy with this man at all um and so uh he's like bringing her back to his castle and is like we're gonna be mates life's gonna be amazing we're married now and she's like dude i want to go back home a very interesting read for sure um but this whole series in general is chocked full of the fate of mate trope and i can't wait to read the next one because the next one looks really good too next i have a whole series i haven't completed the series um i there's five books i'll show you i have all of them um these I dropped it. Anyway, <laughs> these are all of the books in the series. There are five here. The first one is Lord of the Fading Lands. This one really explores the fated mate trope and everything like that. But so each book in the series, this is the Terran Soul series, by the way, each book in the series is about one couple expanding in all five books and exploring their relationship and dealing with just magic and war and everything in this fantasy realm. This fantasy romance series is like epic and their romance in general, Eliseta and um, Rain in here, their, huh, their connection is absolutely everything and um, I just cannot get enough of it. And there's a reason why C.L. Wilson wrote five books for this one couple. There's a reason. In this first book, Lord of the Fading Lands, you get to read about Rain, who is the last Terran soul, which is like a certain fae creature. And he is traveling around the mortal realm for a certain reason, but very quickly, he is able to sense his fated mate. And he goes absolutely ballistic. He's like, I have to find her now. Turns out it's Eliseta, a simple human girl living in the human realm. And she is like absolutely shocked and doesn't believe it when Terran soul, the most powerful fae to ever exist, is like, you're my fated mate, like you are everything to me. She's heard legends and stories of this Fae ever since she can remember. She could not believe that this Fae would choose her, a simple human woman. Um, and she's like, aren't Fae's mates supposed to be like equal in every way possible? I feel like you're getting jilted here. I'm a simple human woman who has like nothing special going on. What is going on? Um, there is way more and what is going on um, with Eliseta and her background in life and where she comes from and her parentage and just like everything going on in this series is absolutely beautiful. I love it so much. I've read these three books and oh, they're so good. This one, Lord of the Fading Lands. This one is Lady of Light and Shadows. And this one is King of Sword and Sky. Like, they're, they're so good. Like, like, I need more people to read this fantasy romance series. I still need to read these last two like I still need to I have not gotten to them yet and a lot of people are like turned off by the covers don't be 
they are so good. Don't judge a book by its cover, y'all. These books are so good. I find the covers to be kind of iconic. I love this series. I need to finish it finally. Um, I think all of the books are on any play to listen to. The audiobooks, I 100% recommend. Um, but the Faded Mate part of this series is so good. Another alien romance, monster romance one that I have to mention is Endark by Honey Phillips. This is book number five in the Seven Brides for Seven Alien Brothers series. These are romance books that are alien romance books, obviously. And um, basically you have uh, this like kind of ice planet, basically a snowy planet. And these seven brother in arms that are alien creatures live on this ranch together. And the neighboring town that's like a few miles away is mainly filled with humans. And one of the aliens is like, I think in book two, Ben Jar is like, I really want a wife. I think we could just go kidnap some of these human women and then like they can be our wives. <laughs> and so Endark in here, he goes to go kidnap his wife, like a wife for him. He do They don't know any better y'all. Like they do not know that it's not good to kidnap a woman. <laughs> and right when he gets to the village one night, like he can send his mate. He ends up kidnapping her and taking her back to his cabin on the ranch. And right from the moment when she wakes up, she's like, who are you and where is my brother? And he's like, brother, you have a brother? Like he wasn't even thinking. He's like, I didn't even think about whether or not this woman had family. I was just solely focused on getting my mate home. And so he's like devastated. He's like, oh my gosh, your brother is alone. I need to go back and rescue him. Little do they know that her brother followed them all the way to his cabin. Um, and he ends up across him trying to go back and find him anyway. Um, so they're dealing with like everything with her brother living with them. And then like, she kind of being scared of Endark at first because this man kidnapped her, obviously. Um, and he's like struggling with his emotions with his alien species when they finally fate find their fated mate. Like they go absolutely like feral and he's trying to like contain himself so he doesn't scare this woman. So that's all I'm gonna leave you with. <laughs> I really enjoy this one. I feel like it could be read as a standalone if you like know the overarching plot line of like, these women were kidnapped, but not like maliciously, you know? <laughs> Another alien romance is Mama and the Alien Warrior by Honey Phillips. Another Honey Phillips book. This is the first book in her Treasured by the Alien series. I've only read this one in the series, so I don't know if the whole series has Fated Mates, because I know with the Seven Breaths for Seven Alien Brothers series, not every single one of the books was like Fated Mates, you know what I mean? This book, Mama and the Alien Warrior. Our heroine in here is actually the owner and runner of this home for like um, runaway women or teens who run away from home because they're pregnant and like their home lives won't support them. And she actually is a mother to her um, sister's baby. So I believe her sister ended up dying shortly after giving birth to her daughter and she has no one else in her life. So she took her in with open arms and she has become like her mother. Anyway, so everyone in this house, all the women in the house, all the babies, the pregnant women, like, they get beamed up, kidnapped by some, like, bad-looking aliens. And um, our hero in here, he ends up across Abby and all these women and um, rescues them from this situation. Right when he sees Abby for the first time, like, he knows that that is his woman. That's his fated mate. And um, she doesn't get that sense, though. Like, she does not sense fated mates because, like, she's a human woman. So... Um, he's trying to like convince her like uh you're mine you like please don't go home like I don't want you to go home back to earth like I want you to stay with me and my people this one was such a sweet cute romance like also her daughter plays a large role in here too and the way he was like fully there to like embrace this like child with open arms and to become her father like oh I pulled up my heartstrings <laughs> a like post-apocalyptic fantasy one I don't, don't really know how to describe it because it takes place on earth but like as if, ooh, have you seen the show? Um, what's the show? The Elf Show. What's that show called? The one with Austin Butler in it. I gotta look it up. The Shannara Chronicles. <laughs> the Shannara Chronicles. Okay, so it's like the Shannara Chronicles setting. Like the Shannara Chronicles take place on Earth, but it's very fantasy-esque because like it's as if elves and giants and magic are now on Earth, but it's like in post-apocalyptic era. Like there are like buildings overgrown with foliage and like cars that are overgrown with foliage and like that kind of thing. Like it has that post-apocalyptic kind of like setting look to it, but it's fantasy on earth. So that's kind of what like The Cursed Prince by C.M. Crawford, like this whole series like takes place on like in this post-apocalyptic fantasy setting. So Marok in here 
is a magical being that has been trapped in this prison for about a thousand years. He's cursed, he has no soul. Before he was in prison, he actually put his soul into a ring and he cursed the ring too, or like put a spell on the ring to only be found, be able to be found by his fated mate. His fated mate just so happens to be Allie, who is robbing a bank and <laughs> comes across this ring in one of like the parts of the bank. And she happens to be a night elf. And then she also gets thrown into the same prison because she gets like caught like robbing this bank, gets thrown into the same prison that Marak is in. So then that sparks their journey of them being fated mates and everything. Like he knows right from the get go, like right when she touches the ring, he can like sense it. He goes, someone's found my soul. My fated mate has found my soul. She's, it's just gonna come to me. It's gonna happen. This world really reminded me of like the Shannara Chronicles world, but also like Crescent City in some aspects with like some modern day technology, but then not like, it was a very interesting world. Um, and I really liked the fact that like, he put his soul into a ring that can only be found by his fated mate. Like, that's so cool. And the last book that I have to mention is Tentacles and Triathlons by Ashley Bennett. This is a monster romance and is the most recent book out in her Leviathan fitness series. Each book in the series is about a human and a monster creature getting together. Um, I love both books in this series so far. One of the heroes in here, his name is Reese. He is the brother to Tegan from book one, the heroine from book one. Reese does not really have like the best relationship with monsters. Also in this world, it's like earth, but if monsters existed too, and they like monsters and humans like live together basically. Um, but Reese doesn't have like the best feelings in relationship with monsters because he has this really bad experience when he was a child of this monster really scaring him. So it's left that imprint on his mind. So he doesn't really trust monsters 100%. But he ends up going to an engagement party that his sister is throwing right for her engagement to Atlas, the guy from book one. And there he meets one of Atlas's friends named Cyrus who happens to be a kraken. Right from the get-go, Cyrus is absolutely besotted by Reese. Like his tentacles have a mind of their own and are like reaching for him because they know like, that's your mate, that's him, that's him right there. Then he is even more thrilled when Reese asks Cyrus to help him train for a triathlon that he wants to participate in because he's not the best swimmer and he knows that like with Cyrus being a crack and like he must be an amazing swimmer. So that causes their kind of like forced proximity romance to happen because they're both like stuck in a pool for quite a long time in many sessions. And so yeah, the more time they spend together training together, the more they get to know one another and fall even more in love. And Cyrus is being very patient. Like he knows that Reese is his fated mate, but he doesn't want to scare him because he knows his feelings towards monsters. So like he's just being very patient and waiting for the right time to tell Reese. Oh, this book was so cute, but hot. Ashley Bennett writes hot, but cute, like cute, but hot romances. Like, whew. this book was very, very, very good. <laughs> anyway, so there you have it. Those were 10 romance recommendations with the faded mate trope in them. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to, and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave the octopus emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.